One of my viewers challenged me to find a second-hand tent for £50 or under. Now, I had a look on eBay, Facebook market page, etc. Nothing really took my fancy. So it wasn't until I went into Aldi for some milk and bread, and boom, there it was. I came out with a tent, and all will be revealed when I get up onto this top up here. So we're heading up this one here, and we're going to continue along that ridge and camp out of sight behind there. And then tomorrow, we're coming back up and over this corbett here. This is relentless. We left the car an hour and 45 minutes ago. We've only done 1.2 kilometers, and about maybe just over 300 meters of ascent. We've got 200 more to go, and we're up on the ridge. Thank God. The going should get a bit easier once we're up on the ridge. I'll put hairs on your chest. <laughs> now that is a fine looking mountain, if I must say so myself. <sighs> Kev, what's the time? It's that amazing time that I always look forward to. That fishy mackerel on a rip. A clock time! <laughs> oh man, my back is like a fishmonger's window. It is ringing. Whew. Yes. Oh man, struggling in this heat. That took us four hours to get to the summit. Still not even done four kilometers. Oh man. <laughs> I could literally just find somebody to pitch now and just chill for the rest of the night. That would be good. Oh. We are currently making our way off Milan Nan Un, the Corbett just up there, in desperate need of aqua. I'm down to my last 200 ml. Well, I've got that murky stuff right enough, but. I'd rather not use that if I didn't have to. That is much better. Hurrah, we found some water. Semi decent as well. It's not running, but it's pretty clear. Followed it, fired in some of these electrolyte hydration tablets. They're the damage. I rate these in the heat like this. Kevin and I have had a quick confab about what to do next. Because the two options are. We can go do the second Corbett, camp up there, and it makes uh, tomorrow a little bit shorter. However, there's two tops that are outliers. They're not Corbetts or anything, but they offer the best views. And you can actually see them on the road, on the way to Kinloch U, and they actually look really nice. And they actually have uninterrupted views right across uh, open tract of moorland, and you get a grandstand view over to the Fanex. so I think it's an obvious one we're going to push on and camp on this uh, one of the subsidiary tops I have no idea if the camera is going to pick this out but there are several grazing deer down there They have detected me, and they've scarpered. God, there must be... Ferry? No, no, no. There's more than that. 40 upwards, easy. I'm guessing they don't see many humans down here. Just a little update, troops. We are closing in 
on our destination for the day and it's been quite a toughie we've been going six and a half hours and ironically the Walk Highlands website has marked this as a five to seven hour walk and you know we haven't even completed half of it yet I don't know if it's just been the heat it's been really tough going oh yes 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 this is what I'm talking about it was definitely worth the detour check out the views it is a little bit hazy but wow Right folks, I've found my pitch, I'm quite happy, I'm going to go just behind me where my trekking pole is But here it is, this is the bad boy here It is the Aldi Adventure Ridge Backpacking Tent Two Man When they say two man, wait till you see it You could get two people in it, but pfft, aye You would have no room for the gear So yeah, you've got 17 steel pegs Two sets of poles, orange one to the feet The blue poles up to the head And you've got an inner and obviously your fly sheet here And four guy lines I'd be swapping them out to be honest Get some proper line locks and Dyneema yeah, so decide where you want the door and then just pitch it out at the four corners What I would do if you end up with this tent as well is I'd replace the pegs because I don't really rate steel ones to be honest They're a bit heavy and they bend dead easy I would swap them out for I don't know the V pegs or the Y pegs the aluminium ones you can get them for help kit Aliexpress, piece of that, dead cheap Very easy sleeves just to feed that through Then you've got Little eyelets Either side Just pop them in Like so, there we go At each side here You've got a little clip here Which just clips onto the side there That just pulls it out a little bit So there you go, just like that I could probably get away with sleeping in that tonight given how warm it is Very little chance of any rain But obviously I'm just going to stick the fly on anyway Right So the next part of pitching this tent Is just drapes in the fly sheet over the inner Make sure you line up the door with the inner door And what to do is just do a couple of rudimentary pegging ins Just to hold it into place And then we'll go round and we'll put in the rest So there's nine in total for the outer sheet And it really is just a little bit of trial and error Until you're happy It's nice and taut Toyed like a toiger No double zip unfortunately And no elasticated loops for holding the door open It seems to do a good job Just inside the fly sheet there's a couple of silly little bits of string It's meant to tie the fly to the inner pole here I'm not going to bother, I don't think you really need that I think if the, if the fly sheet is going to rip off, they're not going to do much So I'm just going to leave it as it is And I'll show you inside I've got clegs and all sorts, so this is going to be a, a bit difficult without letting all the insects in <laughs> 
The inner door has two non-elasticated loops, which is quite clever. It means there's not going to be any bit of your door dragging at the bottom. So you can see it is pretty spacious. I mean, it will sleep two people. It's just where do you put the gear? It's got two big mesh pockets each side. They're quite deep, so you can put your car keys, mobile phone, whatnot in there. Dinner al fresco in a summit camp. Hard to beat. Very hard to beat, isn't it? Honestly, we have travelled so many times along the A832 there. We've always looked up and admired these two hills. We've always said we'd come up. And finally, here we are, camped on it. I have to say, it hasn't disappointed. It's fantastic. Got really good views. Barry. It's Barry. Barry is Edinburgh dialect for good. Oh, super boss. So yeah, you would turn off near Garve and you come along the A832, right along here. There's the Fanex. And then, just where you can see that water glistening, you've got Aknesheen down there. Fionn Venn, the Munro in the centre. And then, out towards Torridon. This fella here is tomorrow's mission. We'll go up over the summit and then finally drop back down to the car and head home. Thunderstorms are still coming in in midday apparently. So we reckon if we leave at 6, we should get back at the car for 7, 8, 9, maybe 10 o'clock in a 4 hour drive home back down to Edinburgh. But anyways, I'm going to call it a night. I'm just going to enjoy the rest of the evening. What I'll do though is I'll bring you back in the morning. I'll tell you how I found the tent go over the little quirks and good things about it. But otherwise, see you in the morning. Woo. Good morning, campers. Oh man, how rude. Kevin's just literally woke me up, playing music outside my tent. Oh, I've shattered. <laughs> it is half five, and sunrise is in like nine minutes, so uh, I need to get down the road. I'll get barred by the missus. Yeah, the interior, it's a bit, I feel it's a bit short. I mean, I'm five foot ten. And if I'm sleeping on my back, my feet are touching in or pushing it out to the fly sheet. So luckily, I'm more a side sleeper. And it's fine because I slightly bend my knees and it's fine that way. But this isn't a tent for a tall person. Um, and your head's touching the uh, inner here as well but uh, aye width wise it's fine it's not a two man tent no chance uh, it's more a one person tent with a bit of space the vestibule hmm it's almost non-existent I'll show you yeah so here's your vestibule you see there it's not got much room so if I move my boots, you could get a stove here, but you've not got much height. So I'm going to be cooking outside. Um, a little bit of storage just behind me here for bits and bobs. What Adventure Edge should have done is bring in the space a bit, made it a one-person tent, and you might have had a bigger vestibule. But uh, I suppose only £40. Pound. Um, would I buy it again? I mean, yeah, I probably would, but I noticed the um, the OEX Fox was on sale for £45 in Taizo, so if you could get that on sale, it might be a better tent. It probably is a better tent, to be honest. But uh, yeah, if it's not on sale, uh, what else can you get for £40-£50? Not a lot, to be honest. Um, there is There is stuff out there. Anyways, I'm going to get up just now and check out this sunrise. Current settings, at half five in the morning. Got a shallow inversion there. Well, the sun has just rose. 
behind the uh, Munro that we camped on just the night before last. Uh, ben with us. Now we've got the cooking station going. I'm getting breakfast and coffee on the go. So I've got my usual porridge in a bag and a wee Kenko sashi. And that is going to boil very soon. Leave no trace. Let's go. Right, we've been going 15 minutes now. That's the summit there we were camped on. And we're heading up this core bit here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up the video because uh, we just want to get up and going as fast as we can. So if you've watched this far, thank you very much. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.